you know, you know, and I know, and they know, they know, and we know, we go all in, you know, and I know, and they know, they know, cause we know, we go all in. I try oh, to fix know. that. You oh, know, you know. <laughs> try to fix that. We're going to get it right. We're going to fix that. What up, people? Thank you for joining the crew. It's your boy, Young FK, Dizzle DC. What up, man? Man, what's good, man? The anticipation was killing me. Sorry for the late start, guys. <laughs> Over here, you know. He had to do a, he had to do a wardrobe change. So like, it was all me. It, it was, it was all me in the video. It was all me trying to do do more than I should. What's going on, man? How was your week? Raynard's in the building. What up, what up, what up, for and all, man? What's good, Raynard Cooper, man? I'm here, man. You know, happy to be here. It's Sunday, just like we always do on the All Dressed Up podcast. Me and k Dills will get on here and talk a little bit. You know, we talk about a lot of things. It's funny. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, uh, so 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 what do you talk about in your show? I started I started laughing. I said, shit, everything. Right. You know? Right. So you try to so you try to put you in the box. So what are you what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You're in rap, hip hop. You talk about social yeah. issues. It's, it's like the name of this title of this actual episode. Everything goes. We ain't leaving shit out. We talking about everything. Everything, everything goes. goes. And and so let's let's get it out of the way. Let's get it straight up out of the way. Cause you said something in our pregame warm up. And fuck you, first and foremost. Secondly, <laughs> shout out to the Philadelphia Eagles. We're gonna go into sports and removing Carson Wentz and sending him into the Indianapolis Colts. Not only that. Not only that, but cutting Deshaun Jackson. Okay, mm, mm, mm. you heard about that, did you? They released uh -huh. Deshaun Jackson. Long overdue. The dude played like three games last year. So, okay, they've been talk. They've been talking about getting rid of Wentz for like two years. It's like no, but it was a it was a clear cut sign when they when they drafted a quarterback in the second round. You don't draft quarterback in the second round when you got an all star, and you know starting for you. That just spells doom. <laughs> and he had a bad right. season all together. It was just what it was supposed to happen. So that's my quick shout out to the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't know what we're going to do next year, but I know we ain't got no Carson Wentz. We got black man at the helm. Shout out to Jalen Hurts. I hope you do excellent. And we're going to move on from them, from my sports take. You got anything on sports? I mean, don't, 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 don't pass it to me. I mean, obviously, I don't have much to say about the Eagles. Uh, Y'all have been trash. You will be trash. You traded Carson Wentz for a pack of envelopes and 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 some Skittles. I mean, two Newport draft box. picks. Shit, not even a box. They got the soft pack, <laughs> the old junkie pack. <laughs> Carson Wentz for the junkie pack, but no. But seriously, I mean, you know, back to the drawing board, y'all go. Be thankful, man. You got a Super Bowl. You know, a lot of your fans were, were, were praying for one. You got it. You won't see another one anytime soon. Um, uh, okay. Seriously, seriously. This, this episode is being recorded in front of a live chat audience. Okay, so everything you say can willingly really be used against you in the court of the future. So let's what keep that should, in mind. What should be used against you in the keep court that of the in future mind. is that you started the episode off with them sorry ass Eagles, and you're wearing that goddamn hat. <laughs> And it's not even football season. Like what? I mean, people are probably watching us right now. Like, what is going on? I don't know. Don't care. But don't care what you, how you feel. I mean, I got to give him credit. He loves his team. Now, my my sports take is obviously I've switched gears to you know the NBA. Um, I'm, right. I'm looking at I'm looking at who's running right now for the MVP up until the All Star break. You got your boy uh, LeBron. He's got a chance to really stand out because Anthony Davis is hurt for two weeks. You got yeah. your boy Joel and B dropping the 50 and 17 last night. How about that? Come on, man. 50 and 17. How about that? And he still got some post moves. You know, he bangs down low, kind of like your old traditional center. And then you got, you know, a couple of your other guys behind him, like Jokic, you could think about. 
uh, maybe a Kevin Durant. You know what I'm saying? Um, but mm-hmm. you know, I'm following. I'm following the NBA. The NBA right now at this point. NBA. NBA is running tough, man. You a bigger NBA fan than I am. So now I got to brush up on my NBA skills just because of that. And I'm gonna take it from the NBA and then just one other quick shout out. Shout out to Naomi Osaka, winning her second Australian Open. Okay, Steph Curry mm-hmm. got you know. Yeah, Steph, Steph Curry. Curry yeah. Steph Curry is a, a great star amongst a rebuilding team. You know, obviously we know. I don't know if you saw what happened last night. Draymond Green, this guy goes and gets teed up, throws, gets thrown out the game with like 0.2 seconds left. Gives the other team, I think they were playing Charlotte. Give Charlotte two free throws. They tie the game up. Then no. they make the shot. Yeah. Then Terry no. Rozier. Yes, Terry Rozier hits the game winner off of them getting the ball off of the technical foul. So shout out to Jamon Green being selfish and being angry. <laughs> and, and and Steph Curry, you know, he's a beast, man. Raynard, Raynard knows what he's talking about there, but there you go. Hey. Hey, like once again, shout out to Naomi Osaka doing her thing. Okay, one of the things we before we get no nah, talk really, about that though. What talk about before you move on? Talk about Osaka, oh. man. Talk about Serena, bro. So, so that happens all the time in sports, right? Naomi Osaka. Imagine because you got to look at it from Serena Williams' perspective because she knocked right. off Serena Williams, right? So you got to look at it her perspective. Imagine being being that. Um, the gate crasher to to this whole different sports, right? I'm not look Arthur Ashe first, then Serena and Venus Williams really revolutionized the tennis game and brought more people to the sport and became the example of of excellence in tennis for many years. So imagine you being Serena Williams, okay, and the example you set has come to fruition. The person that idolized you that started playing tennis because of you at a young age has now come up in the ranks and whooped your ass <laughs> twice. It's a, it's a good story. You know, it is a good story. It is a good story. It's an acceptable way for, I guess, for the past of the torch to go down, but to see Serena go out like that, obviously she left it all out there, but she's 39 years old. She's got, yes. you know, she's got so many major championships that she can't even keep up. She's, she's got trophies that's gotten stolen from her house. She's gotten so many she doesn't even know. She People got a trophy stealing. house. She got a trophy that's, house. That's how you know you got a lot of trophies when they see your trophies and you don't even know you lost them. <laughs> she but, got a you trophy know. house. But that that kind of goes goes with the territory when you talk about sports. I mean, I said it earlier. Michael Jordan start start getting whooped. He's like, all right, I got I gotta go. Jerry Rice. When he when they told him, "Hey, you're not gonna be the number one," he retired. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know why they were still making him number one where he was, but what um, up, Big P? It's just what it is. What up, P? Shout out, shout out to Big P in the building. It was yeah, that Jerry Rice was a beast, I never though. got the I never got to ask P how much that expensive was that Super Bowl lunch that you uh you had because he did put that put that lunch up and lost that bet. Hey man, but, jumped out there. You know, sometimes that's what happens. What up, push? Bring you in there. Bring you in there. All right. So look, before we get to that, we're gonna start a real quick segment that I thought was awesome that we need to do every week. This week in Black Business, we want to go ahead and and put it on showcase and advertise some people that are local or may not be local, uh, but we want to support in Black businesses. And he- Young Half, you up? You up first? Who you got, my man? All right, so this week in Black Business, we're going to shout out Artistry by Maya. Artistry by Maya is located on 63, 6333 Old Branch Avenue, Temple Hills, Maryland, Suite 300, Studio 11. Obviously, we just passed uh, Valentine's Day, but Mother's Day is coming up. Take your lovely mom and your lady to go ahead and get her face beat, as the ladies like to say, right? Look at that. Look at that professionalism. Uh, great makeup and artistry by Maya, as, as she says in her title. So, you know, tell her that Young Half sent you, and she will definitely take care of you. So, where can you find her? Like I said, she's uh, at 6333 Old Branch Avenue, Temple Hills, Maryland, Suite 300, Studio 11. And she's on Instagram at Artistry by Maya. Shout outs to you. 
Shout outs, shout outs to artists by Mike. Super dope, super dope. And let me see, I don't even know. Do I have mine ready? I think I do. All right. You gotta so, make sure you get it ready. I do. I have it up. I have it ready, and it's probably unexpected uh, when I pull it up. But mine is shout out to uh, Monica B. Miller, aka the Hospitality Coach. Now. Uh, she does a lot. Of, you can find her on Instagram. You can find her on Facebook. You can find her on. Um, uh, look, I, I don't even have it. But what's the what's? I'm I'm about to be real old right now. I'm about to be real old. Oh, TikTok. <laughs> That's because I'm not on it. Find her on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Uh, she does cooking and coaching. Uh, she's a small business owner. She hosts the Kids Cooking Club on Instagram. You can go check her out, find her there. She's got great, great content. You know, not only just cooking, but also hosting. And look, she does these. She does these live shorts, in which she tells you the best ways to set up and everything else. Good friend of mine, known her for a very good time, and she's awesome at what she does. Um, just check her out, man. The hospitality coach. She's doing great things. Proud of her. Uh, and look her up. Like I said, great content. And and um, just all over good peoples, man. So when we do this, we want to make sure that we highlight not only just people we know, but people we don't know. But um, but just make sure we highlight people that are good, doing good things and bring up quality work and, and bring quality things to the community. So. If you in the chat have suggestions, you can find you just hit me up, K Dizzle DC. You can hit up Young Hef at anywhere online. Just look, look at that a little button right there. there Young you Hef go. streams on Twitter, to YouTube, Twitch, everywhere, Facebook, same thing. K Dizzle DC, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, anywhere, everywhere that you can think of. Google it, Google it, Google it, Google it. So check your Googles, man. Check, check your Google. Google me, baby. It's like three things in there. I got one star at Yelp. So, <laughs> an, all right. Before we go down that rabbit hole we talk about. Uh-oh. Before we go down that rabbit hole we talk about, okay? Let's let's talk about, we're going into um, politics. Not politics. A real quick politics. Yeah, be and careful. No, 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 no. I got to get over my chest because because it's kind of to me it's it's crazy, and this is speaking to all the parents. Okay, we know we've been in a pandemic for a year. We're continuing to go in a pandemic. I live in Prince George's County, so what they start sending out is text messages, emails, bulletins, voicemails, saying that they're going to try to push in school in person learning, right? But the way they're trying to do it is two days a week um, in class learning without a teacher. And when they're in class, they're going to be at their desks, PPE, all that good stuff, but on a laptop at their desk without a teacher in the classroom, two days a week. Help me out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, me you know, that's, the, that's, the, that's the time. That's the time that we're in. And at the end of the day, you got to ask yourself, like, what's more important? Is the health of your child more important than the education that, you know, the child is going to go receive? I mean, obviously, we want our kids in the best schools, you know, getting the best educations that we can. But right now, we can't even necessarily guarantee, you know, a safe education environment for these kids. So, OK, yeah. now. So now we talk about what we do to combat that okay so now you have in school in-house learning and you know i've got some friends right now who have, who have some kids that you know they have to pretty much monitor and make sure they're on their computer at the right time doing their classroom right. schedules and such but i mean you really just got to ask what do you what do you want your child to get out of school at this point you know we're obviously not going to be in the same situation like when me and you were in school k does right. so it's a different situation you got to ask yourself what do i want my child to get out of this educational situation 
And, and well, if it comes down to where if you can provide that education, maybe in a in a different source or a different scenario, then so be it. But you know, I'm gonna let you continue. But that's just that's just kind of where I think we are at this point. Well, here's what I think they're trying to get at when they do something like this. They're trying to get at us, the kids getting back into social interaction. Okay, because that's. I was talking to my wife about this, and yeah, it's a struggle trying to keep your kids, making sure they're doing all the classwork, they're on the computers at the right time, and it's a it's a huge strain, but it's something that we've had to do, and we should have some type of rhythm by now, most parents, but when you still throw in that curveball of saying, okay, I'm going to send them kids back to school two days a week, how does that work for the full-time, for the full-time worker, you know, parents that both work and their kids are only going two days a week. How does that, that just makes it even tougher for them to try to figure out scheduling for somebody to have to watch their children for two days a week versus just keeping a whole five days a week like it is now. I'll, I'll say this, my kids will be home until the fall because it doesn't make any sense for me to send them for four months for two days out the week. I get it. I, I understand how important social interaction is with children in schools. It's hugely important. That's the main reason why you go to school is you go to develop those interpersonal skills and communication skills with all the other different human beings there in a learning environment. Because you know, like I know, K, K through 12, you learn your basics, right? Your math, subtraction, reading, division, you know, English, you learn all that basic stuff, right? The other 70% you don't retain or use. Okay. When's the last time you, unless you're, unless you're a, a biomedical engineer, when's the last time you picked up a periodic table of elements? Right. It was in the store. It's like, Oh, wait a minute. This antiseptic has beryllium in it. I can't use that. I'm, I'm allergic to beryllium. No, it's not going to happen. So, I get that. That's the most important part. But just for the sake of saying, and I'm going to open up just to open up. No, nah. mm -mm. I'm out. My kids are staying home. My kids stay home. Some other kids can go. Y'all can do that thing. And, and when we start going to open full time and we feel that it's safe for our kids, then we'll pull, we'll, we'll send them in. But for the two days a week, nah, I'm not, I'm not in that. Just to say that, Hey, we're open. Nah, I'm not doing that. All right, but then, but, but then you got, go but then you got the other side to it too. The other side, the other side is what's, what's up, Big King. The other side is, you know, obviously when schools go back open full force, and when everything really opens up full force, mm -hmm. obviously the 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 vaccine is going to be mandated at that point. I would assume so. So, you know, do you? Do you force your child to get the vaccine and go back to school? Do you get yourself the vaccine and go back to work? I mean, everybody's absolutely. not everybody's not sold. You say, but honestly, you say absolutely. Everybody's not all in on the vaccine yet, though. And okay, chat. Who is if you say one for yes, you'll take the vaccine. Two for no. One for yes. Two for no. If you're in for the vaccine and getting it when it's available for you, one for yes. Two for no. Yeah, we're eventually all going to have to take it to try. It's going to be a requirement. But as it stands right now, one for yes, two for no. Because I I know that there is a big stigmatism. And when it first came out, too, everybody I know, especially African-Americans, because of the history, yes, 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 we keep beating right. that drum, say, no, we're not going to take it. Right? See? No, we're not going to take it. See, that's all like two, two twos right there. We're it's two about twos, Jay right? But we ain't talking about the Jay biggest Z. fear. It's the biggest fear is that they're not is is that people aren't going to take the vaccine. Okay, but my but my question is, when you are a two in the chat, mm -hmm. right, and you're saying you're not taking the vaccine, but what if they require your child to be vaccinated to go back to school? Do you make your child get the vaccine, or do you provide that child? an alternative source of education. Be real here. Like, that's my question. That's a valuable question because that's a hard thing to say at that point. It's a hard thing to say. How do you how do you not allow your child to get the vaccine if it becomes a requirement for them to get it? I mean, how can that's you say how can you say you won't get the vaccine 
but then turn around and allow your child to get the vaccine and go back to school. That's that's hypocritical. I couldn't imagine anybody and, you know, not taking the vaccine, but then allowing their child to. That wouldn't make sense to me. No, no. But just just taking the vaccine, 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 vaccine. We're all going to have to take it sooner or later. There are 500,000 people that have not made it through this virus. Okay. I don't look if there are already people that have taken this vaccine. Okay. And they're still here. They ain't turned into zombies yet. It ain't, <laughs> it ain't uh, world war Z yet. Okay. I am less fearful of what's to come. Okay. There have been, you got different companies making different vaccines. You're right. Since the flu, this thing is, this thing is so far. It's not just when we look at those old, old vaccines, we look at America testing those things on African Americans during a different period of time. Right. And I get it. It's like black people dealing with the police. You already have a certain way you feel you got to deal with the police. This is on a different level. This is a worldwide level. There are no colors with it. People are dying at an alarming rate on something that is in a worldwide epidemic. And this vaccine is getting shipped out worldwide. You say, yes, but it's still but you're, but you're still but you're still not honestly, bro, you're still not getting to the point to where do you feel like the public understands or or feels like this vaccine is a solution? To where everybody's going to continue to line up. Like I get it. Like I know, I know some friends that are getting the vaccine. Don't get me wrong, but I still have a, a, a select group of friends and family that don't really want to be that first selection of people getting that shot. Right. Right. Well, here's the good thing about that. They ain't the first. <laughs> true. That's true. They are not the first right now. They are not the first. They're over a million people, probably plus more. They've already gotten the shot. Already gotten the vaccine. So they ain't the first. You ain't got to worry about being the first. Ain't no first versions of nothing. You know, so all you got to do so, is worry about getting it at this point. So let me ask you a question. So if you get the vaccine, does it make you, I mean, obviously people don't know if it makes you immune to to COVID at that point, right? No, there's no, there's no full on immunity. No, I think it's going to be an ongoing thing. I think, I think the vaccine will be like the flu vaccine that'll come you know, every year, every other year, maybe a requirement. Maybe so you a requirement. pretty much, so you pretty much take, so you take the vaccine, and you still wear a mask, and you still handle business accordingly the way yep. that we're doing right now. Yep. Still handle okay. business, wear a mask, but then you open, you start, you open up, you open up, because you got to open up. The biggest parts of retail industry is is dying on the vine. If they don't pass this money, it's going to be a bigger problem. But the retail industry dying on the vine because people aren't outside. Our economy is based on the retail environment on every aspect. That's 75 cent of the spending is in that retail side. That's how the economy, keep, economy keeps moving. So you look, you can either take the vaccine or be in that small, small percentage that don't take the vaccine. I'd rather be on the side to take the vaccine and have access to do what I need to do and move where I need to move. Well, let's go. Let's go to the chat. 410 beer says, says, let's give it a year and see what happens. <laughs> like, you can sit in your house for a whole nother year. It's on you, player. You know, let's Tell give it truth. a year. Let's give it a year and see what happens. You know, that's that's a, that's a, <laughs> a, a statement. And it's so hit me with that thug life. I got with these for two minutes. He hit me with that thug life on the Twitch. Hey, so. Let's I'm pulling out of that, pulling out of that. OK, and let's go back into a bigger issue at hand, because you brought uh -oh. this up in a major way, man. You was like, we got to talk about this. It's bigger. Why than, you always put it on bigger me, than man. COVID. Hey, I brought it up, man. It's bigger than COVID. Uh, it's bigger than the government right now. It's bigger than Ted Cruz going to Cancun, Cancun Cruz. We got to talk about Kim and Kanye. Hold on. Hold Kim on. Time Ye. out. Time out. <laughs> Time out. What did you say? You said Cancun Cruise. Cancun Cruise. Ted Cruz going to Texas State Senator Ted Cruz. They have no power in dirty water. And this and man he, says, and he had the nerve to go where? He had the nerve to go to Cancun mm. and blame him going to Cancun on his kids. 
my daughters wanted to go. It was a bad idea. When they found out later, released a text message, a group text message, right? A group text message saying that, hey, we're going to stay at the Reels Carlton. You should come with us. We're planning this trip <laughs> to go to Cancun. It'll be great. You know, Stop so you it. Get Dead ass. The man, Stop the it. biggest hypocrite in the absolute universe, okay? The dude that's do that stood up for Donald Trump in the Senate and said the election was rigged, right? During the insurrection, before and after, said, fuck Texas, I'm going to Cancun. You and can't then, do it. it. You, did can't, it. You, can't, you can't just sit there and roll he out of the it. state like that. You're the senator of Texas. You were just talking like you were right, 2024. The chat's got me over here cracking up. <laughs> he blamed it on his kids, though. But then he, he said, says, but, said. Then, but then after, after he said all that, though, he was like, Hey man, last week was tough for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, hey man, you know it, 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 was, it was tough for everybody. I mean, I feel you, bro. Like shit, if if you can make it to Cancun as opposed to freezing your ass off, then so be it. You know, not, in this day and age, go ahead and screw not, across the border, I'm fella. Sorry. He's not a he's not a state senator. He's a U.S. senator, not the U.S. senator okay. of your state during a crisis. You don't leave your state during a crisis to Cancun and say, hey, y'all be all right. I'll be back in about a week. I'm going to holler at y'all. And then vote against um, vote against the stimulus package. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going right. to help y'all. I'm not going to help you. The election was rigged, and I'm going to Cancun because y'all got dirty water and ain't got no electricity. Let's I'll talk be about, back during election time. Let's talk about real, real quick to the chat, right? Four one zero beer says, well, "Well, what about the mayor telling people to man up?" So four one zero beer is talking about that mayor of Texas that resigned. I think he was uh, a mayor of Colorado. Colorado oh, he Springs. got dragged, bro. He got dragged. Colorado Springs. He had the nerve to come out on a soliloquy and say, "For those, <laughs> for those who are cold, man up." Go out there and figure out your situation. Hey. If you don't have water, do what you got to do. Stop stop looking for a handout. I mean, I'm talking about some harsh He got harsh dragged, shit. bro. He got dragged. See, that's what happens. This, this, That's exactly what happens when you're at a certain level and you're in, hey, mama, you, you're at a certain level of money and status and you're beyond that, that veil. You start looking down on the people you're supposed to serve, and start saying shit like that. Oh, yeah. you sh you shouldn't get fifteen dollars out. You don't deserve it. No, that's too much on business. No, the minimum wage hasn't been raised since Jesus Jesus came back. I mean, God, we, they we still getting paid shillings. Look, the <laughs> governor, <laughs> look, the go the governor of Texas. And this is the last one. The governor of Texas try to blame Texas' situation on the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal has been a, a law that they have been talking about introducing into legislation. It's not even law yet. It's not even law. So he blamed it on something that's not even real. It's just a thought. It's a conversation. The governor of Texas. These are these officials that you constantly put in office because of redistricting redistricting, and just full on just I'm, the dumbness. That's the only thing I can say, just dumbness, idiocracy. You seen that movie with Terry Crews? Idioc idi it's idiocracy. I think that's nah, the name they, of it. But, they, but, they, but he set himself up for failure. I mean, for one, he, pro he probably never saw snow a day in his life. And, no. now, and now you're the mayor and you're seeing snow for the first time ever in your life and Shit's going down. It's getting real. Like oh, he started, he started losing his mind. Like, yes. <laughs> like it, it got real down there, man. Yeah, but we're talking moves. Texas climate change isn't real, apparently. So we're going, we're going to move on. We got to get back to your big thing, man. Climate change is okay. not real for them. They, you know, that's what they believe. Hey, Kim Ye, okay, mm, mm. Kim and Kanye, Kim Shipping and games. Kanye West. Kardashian West mm. are getting a divorce. How do you feel? I never thought I'd see the day. 
Never thought I'd see the day that my man Kanye West and Kim Kardashian will be walking away <laughs> from the lovely, what's the word, sanctity of, of marriage. <laughs> Oh, the sanctity right. of marriage. But you know, hey, I guess I guess everything comes to an end at some point. But to talk about, you know, a lot of kids later, we can't just say it was for fame because they obviously both were super famous. But this 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 is a good marriage and divorce, I think, for both of them. I think it ran its course. It's a good marriage and divorce. Yeah. It's a good year. Smoking years. on that Kanye Pat. But I can't say you gotta smoke on Kanye Pat because those Yeezys made it into the Kardashian world. You got to think about it. When he married Kim Kardashian, this is when all of a sudden now he's not rapping every every year, putting out an album. Mm -hmm. He's putting out a pair of shoes every other, what, two weeks. And now he's fashion. Making, he is yeah. literally selling. He is literally selling hobo wear for thousands of dollars. But and people it, are buying it. it oh, it's funny. You can't tell me it's not hobo wear. Okay. Yeah. You're not. You're not gonna lie to me and tell me it's not hobo wear. Okay, you can find that. You can find that at your nearest hobo location on the nearest street where hobos exist. But, but let's but let's call a spade a spade though. Like let's not let's not be too. <laughs> uh, What's up, Tip? Let's not go be ahead, too, go ahead. Let's not hate on them too much. I mean, a lot of people have done it. You know, not to make it a race thing or whatever, but over the years, like obviously Europeans with their fashion and their culture. Like, you know, we get a young black man into the industry that's obviously not going to let just anybody in and just do their thing and, and bubble to the extent that he did. I mean, he knocked on those doors, you know, as a creative mind and try to get his brand into Louis Vuitton, into Gucci, into, you know, whatever right. other brands that were. And now at this point, you know, the Yeezy is selling at a high rate at a, at a very inflated profit. And his profit in the fashion industry is has surpassed it in the music industry. And, and you think about like how the divorce like kind of hits now. Okay, cool. Like they, they, they walk away now, but who knows if he never, if he, if he never married Kim Kardashian, if he'd have been in that position. Now, I can applaud him a hundred percent for the doors that he broke down in the fashion industry and the things that he's trailblazed that I can also at the same time say that I am a firm believer that his clothing line is trash. Okay. That's two <laughs> different things. Two different things. His okay. clothing line is hobo wear, but he did a great <laughs> job getting to the level that he is. Okay. Yeezys, y'all can buy them all you want. I'm never buying them. They always look like dirty sponges to me. But let's talk about Kardashian and West, right? Okay. Let's talk about them because it's looked in two ways. Two ways. Either the Kardashians, which they always have already have a moniker of being destroyers of men, right? They okay. <laughs> destroyers of men. But you gotta look at it the other way too. Are they destroyers of men? Are, but are they women who choose who make terrible choices of men? Which one they're, is it? They're women who got a lot of money. A lot of money. And they're white women. So they have a lot of money and power out there. So unfortunately, they're preying on these black celebrities and these rappers and these ball players that have money as well. And mm -hmm. we're creating we're creating now this whole second generation of of Kardashian <laughs> of monsters that are about to come out. Like let's not even talk about no disrespect to the kids, but they're still they're still breeding this same type of, you know. I think business within a family, if you think about it. All right. So I'm going to pose that to the, to the chat too. Kardashians are the Kardashians. One, if they're destroyers of men, type one. If they are terrible, they make terrible choices with men, type two. Because this is, this is a long awaited conversation about which one is which. Because they, they have a track record. Every man that they have they have come across <laughs> <laughs> has been left in a trail of dust. Okay, I'm, laughing at, I'm laughing at the chat, man. The chat is hilarious. <laughs> including their their father mother. Okay, their mm. father mother who is now a woman. Okay, is it is it one the destroyers of men 
Oh with man, two I'm poor Issa. support Issa. choice of men. Yeah, Issa. I'm not even going to repeat mother. that. Yeah, Big King. <laughs> I'm the, the father, mother. I, uh, he's a man. He's a man. He's a woman now. He's, okay. a, he's a woman now. Right? right. I, I need to know whether it's one or two destroyers of men or terrible choice of men. Because name the ball players that they ran through. And I think they're about to run through a couple more. But what was what was option two? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible choice in men or destroyers of men? One or the two. One destroyers of men, <laughs> two terrible that. choice of men. I, hey man, at the end of the day, you gotta say just like just like Big King Q seventies in the chat, it's gonna be people like him that are gonna set themselves up for that type of for that type of experience, man. They didn't hold Kim Kardashian didn't hold Kanye West, uh, you know, put a gun to his head and make him marry her and go through this ten year ride or whatever they've been on. They mutually <laughs> thought that their that their that their physical physical attraction and their business and personal interests matched up to where they can bond what bond a common form of marriage, right? But at right. the end of the day, it ran its course. You know, obviously, you got a lot of money on both sides. Right, a lot of power. Bring up, bring up. Yeah, I mean, he wrote a song about know. it. I mean, no, he wrote a song about it. Had to. Which one? Had to have one. Huh? We Which want bring up. We want uh, bring up. Yeah, gold digger. So you know that's in there, but um, <laughs> my slide like so, sir. <laughs> so, so the one thing. Now I'll give it to the Kanye Wild out. He he became Trump's biggest fan. He started to want for president. He just started crazy stuff. He was just going left. They blame it on him being bipolar and off his medications. At the same time, the wife is supposed to help keep him in track. But if the man ain't keeping himself up, it's not much she can do. The only thing that I don't know of that he didn't do is he didn't step out. Which is which is a good thing. We don't know. We don't know what the main cause. It could be the issues at hand is bipolar and you know them growing apart. But one thing he didn't do um, was step out, and 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 that was the rabbit hole conversation that I wanted to go into tonight. Okay, and we talk about all right. So let me set this up for y'all. If y'all new to it, it's first time, every every. Um, podcast that we do every live stream that we do we go down the rabbit hole and the rabbit hole is basically a conversation that to take you in any and other directions but it's a deep conversation that you need to talk about okay i saw a post on one of the groups on facebook and had a post of will smith and jada pika smith together taking a selfie right and the, and the post said um fellas don't lose a good woman just because she cheats on you once was it a good woman or a loyal woman? It's a real woman. Don't lose a real woman. I'm gonna I'm look at it just a triple check because it it was wild. Don't lose no. Don't lose a loyal woman just just because she cheated on you once. Okay. Once sounds okay. crazy. Sounds crazy, right? So that that brought me to that question, and I wrote it down. Wrote it down because it's important. Why? This is why question. Why do people cheat in a relationship? Why do you think people cheat? They they better cheat. They cheat better. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm pose that to you. Have why do you think in a relationship? Why do people cheat? What's the so, main reason? You think so 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 cheat? the question is so the question is why do people cheat or or why do men cheat? No no don't do that. We can do men and women. But let's just say people in. If you want, I'll tell you what. If you want to take it to the men's side and then the woman's side, do that. Then. I mean, there's obviously different reasons. We can rank the reasons of why men and women cheat. We can rate, you know, rank them on most popular to least. But obviously, the thanks, common Malika. sense. Thanks, Malika. The, the common sense answer is to say you're looking for something that you're lacking in your current situation. So you're going outside of your current situation or relationship to find whatever you're lacking in that main relationship. That's obviously okay. the common sense, easy answer. Like, hey, I wasn't getting this, so I went over here to get it and this and that and this and that. 
So I'm gonna put mm. it back to you. Let's let's go back and forth for different different reasons. Well, well, Malika says people cheat because they're insecure with themselves. Okay. So is that is that a like you said? You said your main thing was lack. Do you say that for both women, women and men? You stupid, big king. For women and men, because they lack, they're lacking or they're missing something. Well, well, well I guess that could be a form of insecurity. If I'm missing something. And maybe I can't, I don't know, if I can't have that conversation, believe it or not, with my with my significant other and I have to go elsewhere to deal with my insecurities, maybe that could be a case. Or, you know, if, if you feel like you're insecure about obviously your significant other and something that they're doing, you can do something to go mm-hmm. and go elsewhere. But it's, it's a good, it's a good two way, a two way conversation at that point. That's a good, t- it is a great two way uh, conversation. So, so if you're lacking something, do you just arbitrarily go out and seek the thing you lack? Well, at the end of the day, it comes down to what you define as cheating. Like, you know, me, you talked about, and, and right. And, and that's the thing. Like we have a lot of people right now hitting the chat. The chat's going crazy, but yeah, what yeah. do you define? Open your you, mouth and say something. Do you do you have a universal belief of what cheating is going into a relationship or do when you go into a relationship set the standards on okay this is what I consider cheating and if you do xyz I feel like you've cheated you okay. know you can you can go in with a universal standard or you can go in with a personalized you know one two and three <laughs> you per, you get to get a personalized Personalized edible arrangement, or you can get a oh, target yeah. get birthday card. So, oh. what's the universal? What's the what's the um what's the target birthday card? What's the universal signs of of this is cheating? You call it. What do you think it is? What do I think it is? Yeah. What's the universal cheating? Universal cheating is anything that um that purposefully occupies your time away from your significant other because. You're not receiving what you think you should from your significant other. Say that one more time, please, because that was All that right. was a little deeper than I thought. All right, that I thought you were going to take it. Anything that's taking your time away from your significant other. Now it's, it's got to be into a person. I'm going to say things because you can you can kind of generalize things in there too. But I'm going to say into another person um, that takes time away from you being with your significant other. Okay, watching no, that's watching porn is not cheating. Watching porn is is lack of self control. That's all. That's hey, all it is. It's it's not porn, cheating, but it can, it be, can be. But it can it, be something that can damage your relationship. It it look, it's it's a thing. Like I said, you I'm not taking it to a thing. I'm taking it to a person. When you're in someone else's face because you're not getting the thing that you need or the thing you think you need from your significant other, taking that time away. To me, that's cheating. It could be, it could be, and I know men are gonna hate me say this, saying this. It could be meaningless conversation with another woman that you carry on on a regular basis because it's satisfying to you, and it's something that you think you're not getting from you from home. But hold on, hold on, hold on. But see, this goes into the. <laughs> this, <laughs> But this goes into, no, seriously, this goes into the bigger conversation of double standards. Okay. You know, one, one, let's, one, let's talk one, about hand, it. one hand talks to the other, you know, because what, what's good for me might not be good for you. And that can lead to a situation of, I feel like you could be cheating or stepping out because, you know, I can go out with my guys or you can go out with your girls and I can't or vice versa. You know, I've had friends in time tell me that they've actually, upon their engagement, verbally agreed mm-hmm. to not ever being able to go out to a club with their with their friends anymore because his new wife had such a you know insecure control issue. So that's I'm just different. saying, like, no, 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 it's, it's, that's different. You're going into something way different. Let's go back. See, that's different. That's a control issue. We're talking. That's a control issue. <laughs> when you got to cut your people off. Just to be with somebody, that's a control issue. And that, that that dives deeper into a whole other situation that 
that has a whole different can of worms. What I'm saying is this. When you when you decide to invest your time into someone else based on the idea that they're providing to you what you think you need that you're not getting from a significant other, that becomes a problem. That becomes cheesy because now you're getting fulfillment through that from somebody else. And Malika said it way back up in the chat. Open your damn mouth and say what you want. Right? And that goes to the biggest part of it. Why do people cheat? Why do people cheat? People cheat because, to me, because they don't know how to communicate. And they don't know how to communicate what they want or what they're looking for, what they think they're missing. But on the but on the flip side, me being devil's advocate, is that a form of, with it. is that a form of ass backwards communication? You know, like maybe I gotta send a message with my behavior and, and with whatever you say is cheating because I can't speak on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do what I gotta do to show you, hey, look, whatever you're doing to me is causing me to do this. Cause that's the other that's the other percentage. Now see when you say that. Exactly what you just said is just a retaliatory response from and a, and a failure to communicate to communicate. That's a retaliatory. That's you being you going in retaliation. I'm not saying what I really want. You're not understanding what I want. So I'm gonna just go do this. And then right. you're going to see me doing that in response to because you're not you're listening. No, no, no. You said be showing off for others. Look, it's not oh, a, it's not a situation showing off, bro. You got to pee. He, look, he got to pee. It's not a situation to show off. I ain't gonna show no empty chair there. I'm gonna bring your ass back. It's not a situation of showing off. It's just a situation not being able to communicate. If you have an issue, right? If you got an issue and you don't have that conversation with your significant other, whether it be your wife, whether it be your girlfriend. Um, and you you take the time to go out, do something else um, that you already know is wrong, you're still in the wrong. It don't matter what you say or what you use to justify it. It's still wrong. So the biggest part of removing yourself from cheating is talking, communicating, saying what you want, opening in your mouth. Um, now, I'm going to ask the chat too. Why don't you think people do that? Why do people people go out and cheat? Why do you think? Why do you think they don't open their mouths and talk to that? Yeah, I know you're still here talking shit. Why do you think they don't talk? What's the biggest thing? Because this is this is part of the issue on why you have those situations, right? Why do you have so many people talk about cheating? Why do you think the couples don't communicate? Marcus, why do you think? Why do I think? I mean, because like the biggest thing is a, a lot of people don't really know at what point you can really trust someone to open up and be truthful. Like a lot of people say Damn. communication. Right, right. A lot of people say communication Damn. is is talking and and you know saying different things, but real communication is opening up and you know saying what I guess you would say when you don't really care about what anybody feels about what you're saying. Mm, mm, mm. But, mm, sh just to recap, shout out, you just joining in and we're talking about why people cheat uh, and and the reasons why and we're going into the lack of communication why people don't um, don't communicate that. Um, you said something really big. It's because you got to repeat that again because I'm still trying to process it because it's so huge. I mean, the big, the biggest thing is, you know, you, you, there's, there's a blur line between communication and, I guess, saying what you truly mean or feel. Like you can communicate and say certain things, but maybe mean something different, or you can communicate from the heart per se, and really, you know, address how you feel about something, or really explain, you know, how, how, explain what you stand for, as opposed to a lot of us now. You know, especially young black men, we want to be guarded and we want to play, you know, a lot more harder when it comes to, you know, other women and not really opening up 
and letting somebody in because a lot of us come from a lot of stressful, you know, upbringings or different situations, you know, and, and situations like that. So it, it just, it just, it just comes down to how comfortable you can, you can really deeply communicate in my opinion. Yeah. And you, and you said, now I'm thinking about what you said is people have an issue with trust, right? Yeah, the trust right. in being open and being honest and being the best. Like, I, might, I, might, I might, I might, I might be in a relationship with you, but that don't mean I trust you. If, well, let me say, right. But then why are you in the relationship? Why that's, have you committed to it? That's that's a good question. Why, if you're in a relationship, you committed to it, you committed to being monogamous, and you don't trust that person, you, then you shouldn't be in that relationship. One. Two, if, you, if you're not allowing yourself to be open and honest in that relationship, then all you're doing is still carrying in the baggage from the previous but, relationships into that one. But not to cut you off, but look at the chat. Malika Shanae says that relationship was over from the start. <laughs> but, Straight but, up. But here's the thing. But one of those people, and it could be man or female, they might know the relationship's going to be over before the start. Right? But they choose to go into this situation because they know what they're going to get out of that relationship. They're going to use that person for what they want in that relationship. And right. then they're going to make up a reason for it to end. I mean, right. that's another thing. That's, you know, a, a lot of people go totally into different. relationships not even thinking that it's going to even be a long term successful situation. Yeah. Some, he said, some people need to be alone while they find themselves. Right. Some people don't know how to be alone. Right. Very true. Very true. People get into relationships and don't know that, don't know who they really are, don't know who, what they really want. And sometimes you can figure that out through a relationship. Um, that's not always the best way, but that's usually how most people learn. But, However, the, problem, but the problem with relationships, though, man, you know, a lot of a lot of people, as I've gotten around a lot of friends and family that I know, they've been in relationships with myself too. You can almost use a relationship like a job. And as yes. weird as that sounds, it's like I don't like going to work every day, right? I know what it's going to pay me. I know the BS that I'm going to deal with. I know how I'm going to feel when I go home. So it's comfortable. It's what I know. And that's how a lot of people play relationships. Are. Security. Hey, Security. You know, Security. I, I, I know what her, in my opinion, pros and cons are. I know what she's going to bring to my table. I know what I'm going to be able to get away with, hypothetically. Right. And and honestly, both both people are playing that same type of dynamic in the relationship. But they only get, never, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you think you you think you're in control and you're dictating, but mm -hmm. the other side's doing the same thing. Yeah, you're only getting what you want out of a relationship. They're only getting what they want out of a relationship. Nobody's really, really full on and happy or blown out, excited about it. But it's just a, a life decision that you chose. That's that's different. Those are the decisions that, like, you know, parents in the 50s, 60s, and 70s did, right? This right. younger generation is young, wild, and free. They're not ready to run in and have a whole bunch of kids. They're out here living their life. A lot of them are waiter, waiting to have kids. They're planning everything out. They're putting their careers and having kids later in their 30s and their 40s and so forth. Um, and they're different. It's just different. But the, the crux of that, having that relationship is the trust and being honest. And if you can't communicate, if you're not able to communicate and be honest with your significant other, that's a problem. You need yeah. to figure out why you're not able to be honest with that person, because obviously there's something that you don't like about that person, or there's something that you're unsure of about that person. Well, and let's let's hold you back from being being real with them and causing those issues of infidelity and things of that nature, because we're not talking about what we need and we're not serving each other the way we should. Well, I got a question. I got a question for the chat. Right? Let's throw this out there real quick. We in deep in the relationships tonight. I know, man. I'm telling you, man. We went down a <laughs> rabbit hole. But if if your significant other is lacking something or you have a concern about something, type one, if you address your significant other about that concern, 
Type two, if you avoid the conversation and you go outside the relationship. <laughs> are you looking, bro? Are you a op? You a op? That's a good question. <laughs> look, that's a great question, right? But you just said, hey, hey, type one, if you if you don't, you wouldn't <laughs> cheat. Type two, if you would. <laughs> I ain't think about it that way. That's funny. Yeah. That's true. Do you oh, think, well. oh, oh, look at the question from Malika. Do you think your partner is responsible for your happiness? That's I'm a good question. That's a good question. Do I think Go ahead, yeah. my partner, now the key word here in this question, right? Because I'm a great test taker. <laughs> so the key word and Big King says no. I see you, Big King. But the, the the question the is, move. do you think your partner is responsible? No. No, your partner is not responsible because in order for you to be happy, you have to be happy with yourself. Obviously, you have to be content with everything about yourself. You have to be one with yourself, love yourself before you can accept anyone else's love and understand what it means, in my opinion. Um, so as you can see, the chat is on fire, but but no. I don't think I don't think your partner's responsible. Now, you can definitely choose the right partner to be conducive to your happiness. You don't want to be around somebody that's going to detract, you know, your happiness on a daily basis. I don't think that's a person you want to be with, but I think that's common sense <laughs> at the end of the day. All right. I'm going to say yes and no. Oh, and the shit. reason why I'm gonna say look, the reason why I'm gonna say yes and no is because you 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 clicked on it right there. You have to be responsible for your own happiness, right? If you're in a relationship, you also have to be happy with the person you're with, right? They have to they have to fulfill you in certain ways and the reasons why you're in that relationship. If you're in a relationship and that person doesn't bring or generate any type of happiness along that along that path if you're not happy being with that person you can be comfortable with somebody you can you can live with somebody and y'all can just exist and y'all can pay bills together and y'all can act like act like you're cool together go to dinner have sex mediocre or whatever it is or great and not be happy with that person right okay you can do all that you can do all that and that person can generally not make you happy which is why people go and cheat because they're really not happy. They have everything, but they're not happy with their relationship with that person. And there's something, and it's not always something inside. It could be something within that person that they do or they don't like, and they have, they have chosen not to accept it hundred percent. And that's my, that's my take on it. Think about it. Okay. If you've been, you like, you like this woman, you love her, you know, she's beautiful. She's great. She's everything. She's a great mom. She's great kids. She does all that. Um, she's, you know, she does everything you want. It's intimately, physically attracted, all that good stuff. But she just ghetto as fuck. And you can't take her anywhere. Right? You can't take her anywhere. And your job has a th has a thing where it's it's uh you know it's it's white collar you doing tuxedo parties y'all having wine tastings at vineyards and the execs are calling you out and you got to bring your ghetto ass wife that goes to the caviar table table looking for vienna sausages right how do you you're not happy with that person right now <laughs> with that example who who's at fault? You're talking about if you outgrow your significant other at that point, because at some point you had that fall in love with get the her same, high, go. <laughs> you had that fall in love with the same woman Makes that walked up for the Vienna sausages. But all I'm saying is, man, you know, we got to figure out how to be real with it. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people are scared. It's just like it's just like stepping out and betting on yourself. You know, right. you, you love you love your significant other, you're in a relationship, you're getting you're benefiting something because you're in that relationship, right? You're getting right. something out of it. 
But for some reason, you want to do other things into a different situation, but still deceive that relationship. At the end of the day, you got to be a grown up and be an adult and figure out what you're lacking in that relationship. And in my opinion, address that person in that relationship. It's 2021. And, you know, if you if you feel like you have to step out because of something, don't be in a relationship. You know, don't Facts. be in a relationship, man. It's, I it's concur, of, Young Hef. You you can definitely run these streets. There's a lot of games you can play. There's a lot of open seats you can fill. <laughs> Trust me. We are in. I had this conversation with my sister. Uh, we are in an area that the female to male ratio is like eleven to one. See the eight to one or eleven to one. Mm. And there are a lot of married men with single women who are comfortable with being that single woman on the side. And uh, my uh, my sister was asking me like, why do these people, Kermit? Why do these why do these women put up with it? And that for that same ex- same exact why do women thing we why do women put earlier, up with side pieces? Well, being a side piece. Why okay. do women put up put up with being a side piece? And okay. I told her because they want that security they want that security they want a man that <laughs> that's their man that's not cheating on them <laughs> you see these fingers <laughs> you see these fingers <laughs> that's not cheating on him because he only goes one place at home so what about the people who cheat and mess with someone someone <laughs> less than their spouse some guy cheat and go get a bum when they have a queen at home that's, but see, we but see we go back to the original statement that I made too. You know, Malik Shanae poses a great question, but you have to you have to ask the question: What are you What are you going out and getting a bum for? I gotta be devil's is that advocate. Bum, is that is that bum, the bum doing the something bum, that the, the queen bum, ain't doing? That's it. The bum can be sorry at playing basketball, playing spades, at playing whatever else, but she might or he might be good at one aspect of the game. She might be at the old razzle-dazzle. And you just get the fizzle. What if, do you if, do? If if that's the type of person that you are. Or, <laughs> you know, seriously. I saw if you did that. Or, or you can have the conversation, obviously. But, you know. It's, you won't take Keisha to meet your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and, that was pretty. And, I wasn't and, expecting and, that from you. And that, that and that and that's the Trump card. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's all facts. Look, you, exactly. You're going to get something that you think you need that you ain't getting home. The bum stroking that ego. True, a hundred percent. That's part of it too. A man feels like he got to run out there and run the streets because he's growing up with this false sense of insecurity, thinking that that's what you're supposed to do. That that goes into a whole different rabbit hole. We but, talk I'm about gonna, but I'm not going to sit here and give excuses for all these cheating ass motherfuckers, Kermit. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, I'm not giving excuses either. But it, it, go ahead. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, we don't love the hoes. Either either you're gonna be either you're gonna be straight up about it or you're not. That's what it is. You you two adults in a relationship, either you're gonna call spade a spade, our favorite cliche, and address that person, or you're gonna be, you know, conniving and going around their back because you don't have the courage to address that person and figure out what's wrong with your relationship. But that's not get, fair. Look, but let's be honest, they're not we're not grown ass adults, okay? We grew up but we still those same college or high school motherfuckers that are as immature, but with bigger bank accounts and houses and other dumb shit. But at some and point, still you gotta, grown. But, at, but at some point, you got to respect your significant other just you, enough you, to have yes. that to be able to have that conversation. And yes, if you can't, you and if you can't have that conversation, or if you don't, if you don't have that level of respect, then you never really cared about that person anyway. <laughs> 45 and new 22. <laughs> you didn't care about the person. You only cared about what, what they provided. Like, I know. Is that Justin? Tight pants? 
Is that um Big King Hugh seventy? I'm not gonna expose Big anybody King. on the chat tonight, but he's hilarious. <laughs> he's hilarious. Loose he lips. Is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you if you if you are stepping out, if you're doing that, man, you you said the biggest thing is addressing it. The biggest thing is addressing it. Making sure that you address the situation at hand. If you're not talking about it, then you don't really change it. Have your cake and eat it. Do some folks exactly. that want to see if they still got it. Yeah, see, you got an element OG. of folks see, out that's, there. That's the OG response. Have that's the OG triple OG too. response, right? Mm -hmm. But the the truth of the matter is, if if you if you got a good piece of cake, you got a really good piece of cake, and you getting everything you need. Because it's always some, it's always something. There's always something. And if you're terrible, if you're terrible at communication, if you're terrible at communication, then you step out because you're scared. It's entitlement that makes a person not respect their partner. Men often feel like they deserve to have it all. They don't feel like they need hey, to sacrifice pull, it you all. You are a man hater. You want to pull? You want to pull Big King in? <laughs> no, I'm not pulling him. I'm not pulling him in. Mark right. Nebo, you're a man hater. I love you. What no, you, what, what did Mark true. Nebo say? What did he he say? said it's entitlement that makes a person not respect their partner. Men often feel like they deserve to have it all. They don't feel like they need sacrifice at all. They yeah, but that's not, but that's not just. But but you know what though? I'm not gonna let Mark Nebo just just <laughs> uh, just, just crap on men either because that's a female trait. I like Mark. And I'm not. I'm not going to. Who's in just, the background? That's yeah, of, of course, of course, like a, a young woman will say she's like that's going to like Mark right now, Mark. But but oh a man and a woman. But a man and a woman can have a sense of entitlement. Let's not let's not do that. Yes. So yes. men often feel like they deserve to have it all. That's definitely not the case. Women women often feel like because they've come up on getting married. And and watching the the movies of you know getting getting carried off in their chariot with their knight in, in shining armor. Let's let's just be let's just be fair about. Uh, and I'm not trying to get in trouble tonight, chat. <laughs> it's, it's too late. Okay. We're the right the whole story. <laughs> I know you, I know what you're doing. I know why I'm getting those answers from you tonight, Hef. Right. I know. Right. I know. Yes. If it was a totally different uh, element, as usual. Is she? <laughs> Sheesh. And it was and it was restricted yeah. access to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a completely different conversation. But no, <laughs> right, right. Man, said, I said, man, so e different. Man, right? <laughs> what? I said, Mary Which, man, Mary man, act so different when you see him out in public. <laughs> oh, hold on, you see him with oh, the oh, lady, Mary man, Mary man, be like, hey, how you doing? How you doing, Kermit? Yeah, it's the weather nice, you know. Hey, what's see, going on, bitch? See him, no, see him Mark out said, his hey. Mark said something big, and that's a big thing to say. He said, okay, maybe that's just what made me cheat when I did. Oh, I'll own oh. that. Well, that's see, why that, I did see, it. I worked on but that. see, a lot of people aren't a man like Mark neither. Exactly. They see, aren't man enough to be honest about see, it. But see, that's being accountable, and that's a whole right. different level right there. Because once you make it to accountability, you can have a kind of conversation about anything. Yep, that and that's going to that's going to the core of what we're talking about: being honest with yourself and being honest with your spouse, and ha and being able to have that conversation and say the only reason the only reason why you do it the only reason why you do it okay and and I'll and I'll go against that a little bit, Mark, because the reason why you do it is be because not because you feel like you got to have it all; it's because you feel like you. You not getting everything you want from home, and then we look at that and say, "Okay, here's a mountain to climb, and it's open and it's accessible. Let me climb it." That's why we go out and do it, right? You can't see it because he's on Facebook, man. So that's why men go and do it. They feel like there's something else out there, more or better. But if you're getting everything, you're getting everything at home, everything at home. You ain't looking. That woman can literally run up to you in a trench coat, ass naked, and you say, no, ma'am, I love Jesus. Thank you for your time. I'm telling you, if you're getting it all at home, that man ain't going nowhere. But see, here's the funny part, right? So so we got a chat that says that is so true. A lot of men can't stand up and be honest, just live lies and so called. So lie. a lot of women can't either. Like you gotta be honest. Ooh. You gotta be honest here because 
over the last 20 years, I think the tables have turned. I think, and, and I'm not, I'm definitely not trying to open up this can of worms, but I, <laughs> too late. <laughs> but, but I think we can all kind, kind of honestly agree if we had to vote, if we had to vote. All right, chat, don't be scared, chat. I want to see your ones and twos, chat. If you think it's easier for men to cheat, type one in the chat. Oh my god, let me type a if one you, right now. If you think it's easier for women to cheat, I'm a type of one. Type a two, two in the chat right now. I'm a type of one. I'm a type of one. Me, uh, nope, don't say that, Mama Hef. Don't say that men do more cheating. That is totally untrue. Women just don't get caught. We got a two. We got women a one. Just we don't got get a caught. two. We got a two. It's a. It's easy. It's easier. Where we at? How many Canada? Easier for women. A hundred. See, we easier three, for women. Three two you know, two ones. You know what? <laughs> it's. I, you know what? It might be easier for women because men slinging it all day, every day, and they don't care. <laughs> I got to give it to them. They don't care. And, and then what the hell is three? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, you know. King is part of that alphabet crew. You can't even play attention to him. Uh, don't don't be out, don't, don't don't be going too deep out here in the chat. Exposing your, yes. Don't be putting your skeletons out here in the, in the no, chat. No, no, do it, do it. I've done it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but let's talk about it. no. But that's that's a good question. Is it easier for men or is it easier for women? Right, that's and it looks point. like the it looks like the women. Let me count it. I gotta go back and count one, two, three. It's the women. It's the women, bones and all. Ooh, I, I, I guarantee. Mm. I, I bet any amount of money. I bet any amount of money. The conversation between a woman cheating and a man cheating is much more longer for a man cheating and his explanation than a woman. I can say that again. Say it. I got to process that. I got women are better at um, cheating. A man cheats. He look at look at Malik. It ain't a fair look, question. Look, look, look. Women are better. Who who? Right. <laughs> if a man cheats, he's gonna have yeah. to come out with some storytelling shit since Biggie. If a woman <laughs> cheats, she gonna say three words. She gonna probably say, mm, "All right." A man cheats, it's going to be, well, look, you know, I came around to the store, and come on, man, you already know how it's going to go. Uh, look, a woman can have a side guy for 10 years, and they stay in the lane. A woman, uh, yeah, a man can have a side piece for 10 years, and they stay in this lane. That, 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 that's, pff, I know too many, too many conversations. So, I think we already know the answer, but I'm going to say it anyway. If a man, I think, but I think, woman, but I think that's a testament on. I'm sorry to cut you off. I think that's a testament on how shitty dudes are. She says a woman can have a side guy for ten years and he'll stay in his lane because he's gonna be rating right his hiding spot. <laughs> a man can have a, a, man whole, get a whole family, a whole family. Oh man! So if okay. That's kind of ah. I'm not even gonna ask that. Who takes it? Who you can't even ask that question. Who takes it? Who takes it worse, men or women, when they find out? No, no, no. no that's 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 a tough question. That's that is that's tough. Gonna, you can't answer because that's individual. So let's let's not even go there. Let's stay on let's stay on that. stay on the left side of the fence. Stay on the left side of the fence. Um. All right. Let me ask you this question. I got one for all the chat and you. This is a good question. Go ahead. Who's first to reach out to the, the cheating person? The guy or the girl? Who? What are you talking about? What do you mean? If I know you're cheating with my girl, who's first to reach out to that person? The guy reaching out to the guy who's cheating with his girl or the girl reaching out to the girl who's cheating with the guy? Who's first? Mm. Who's first? Who's first? Who? If they have access to that person hey, and, that they know, goes and they know who it is, Who's going hard first, the guy or the girl? That goes, that goes, that's basically. I think the goes, female's going way hard. No, no, no. The it's female's based going on, way harder. Come on, K Dizzle. No, I am. Look, that so you telling on, me right now, no, if you got if you got a clean shot at the dude that you know your proverbial girl's cheating on you with, 
you're gonna go smack at him off the break? No, I'm saying this. That question a hundred percent depends on whether the woman's name is Sharkeisha or Robin. <laughs> and it depends if the man's name is Marcus or Marquel. Okay. <laughs> it just depends. It depends. You gotta elaborate. Sharkeisha is is for the smoke. Marquel is for the smoke. Marcus may not be for the smoke. Robin may not be for the smoke. Okay. <laughs> Robin is going to get a glass of wine, Everybody call up her dies. girls, and have a wait until <laughs> exhale moment. Right. Marcus is going to find it. Marcus is going to find another girl to go up underneath the one that's been waiting on the side. Or he ain't gonna run his boys. That's the difference. The man, if the man find out that the woman cheating, he ain't telling nobody. Who he telling? Are you going? Are you going to say, "Hey, yo, I just found out my girl cheating on me, dog"? Man, men talk a lot too. We do talk a lot, but if men are too prideful. If they don't have that type of person in their life, they're too prideful. They ain't gonna have that conversation. They're not. Okay. They just gonna say, "Oh no, nah, man, we broke up, man. I got tired of her for real, for real." You know, what I'm saying it was over. We it was over a long time ago. We was just we just waiting for it to happen. Nah, nah, motherfucker, she cheated on you. You cried in the car, and you decided to cut it off. Or she left one or the other. She left with Winston. He, he ain't gonna have that conversation. Most of them not gonna have that man that manly conversation with another man because most men don't have that type of person in life, or they're too profitable. But the woman, like I said, the woman gonna have a whole waiting to exhale moment. They're gonna have a they're gonna have a wine tasting in the basement with the women. They're gonna talk about how much that nigga he a dog, this that and the other. Okay, and go okay. all out or go have a party or whatever. Okay, who gonna call their boys? But, but look at yeah, the Marquette Marquette list. But they're gonna you call, gonna call and roll up. Okay, but who but who calls who first? Do, do you call your boys first or does she call her girls first? Nine times out of ten, she's calling her girls. 100%. The guy, the guy's not gonna call their boys and be first no. up to, to throw until, his story out until he talked to Friday her. night, right? But he until don't want to. But he don't want to be Friday night's news before everybody goes out and say, "Hey, hey, fellas, before we all go to Buffalo Wild Wings, I got, I got cheated on tonight. Can, can y'all help me out?" And then everybody gonna be like, "They, they don't, he don't want to be that. <laughs> he don't want to be that guy." You don't want to be that guy. But the girl can say, "Hey, hey, hey, girls, can y'all come over? I got some ice cream. I got some weed, some edibles. We're gonna sit around and watch a movie, and we're gonna talk about these motherfuckers tonight. That's exactly. Oh, we're gonna talk about how much of a dog he is. You know, hundred percent. We're gonna we're gonna rip his we're gonna rip up his Jordans, his Tims. We're gonna do everything. His stuff gonna be in the street." And it's gonna be in trash bags. You know what they're gonna do? They're gonna bag the clothes up, find out where the girl live, okay? Ride over their house in the caravan with the trash <laughs> bags full of clothes, right? They gonna first they're gonna sell the PS5. <laughs> they're, gonna sell, they're gonna sell the PS5 for three hundred dollars. Shit. <laughs> about, about, about said, look, look at your face. Look at your face when I said that. They're gonna sell it for three hundred out of spite. <laughs> wait, wait, next hell. <laughs> why somebody? Why somebody say Judge No Brown? <laughs> <laughs> they gonna do all the crazy stuff and go about it. I can hear Judge No Brown saying right now, three hundred dollars for your PlayStation Five. <laughs> Shit, three hundred dollars. That's highway robbery. Why you let? Why you do the man like that? Three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars, <laughs> and you didn't get a PlayStation Five. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's my let me, terrible let me come, Judge Joe Brown impression. Let me come up for it. Let's come up for it, man. Why yeah, do yeah. people cheat? And I think we we got to the crux of it was because not only just the failure to communicate, um, but the failure to be honest. To be honest with your significant other. If you're not Lack honest of. with your significant other, and you're not yet relationship is not that open, you need to rethink why you are where you are and with who you are because if gotta, you're not able to be that far open with the person and say hey this is what i'm having a problem with we need to talk about it then that's an issue now if you say that you have try to have that conversation and they say i'm not talking about it or i don't want to talk about it that's totally different but if you're not 
expressing yourself and saying what you need and expressing what your needs are and your issues are and we're not working through them that's that's part of that is on you that doesn't give you a right to step outside of the commitment that you decided to make 100 percent. everybody makes mistakes i'm not saying that it's not a it's not unfor it's not unforgivable but you have to if you do like mark did you have to learn from your experiences and become a better person from it you have to be able to take those situations and grow from this this guy sounds like motherfucking rev run at the end of his show when he was typing in the bathtub but nah, but the nah. Moesha music <laughs> but no nah, but 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 good but good information all, no seriously all jokes aside man and you know, it really comes down to being able to look yourself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. You know, we all we all have to sometimes take take a moment, look at yourself in the mirror and figure out what you really want and what can you do for yourself. You mm -hmm. know, we can't we, we gotta stop putting the onus on other people to fix our problems. That's the biggest yep. thing. And and that and look, mama, if that goes all those sayings, gotta have the cake and eat it too. Test the waters. Gotta sow your seeds. Got oh, she an OG. She's a man, an OG. a man being a man. That's all bullshit. Those are excuses for bad behavior. That's 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 all that is. Excuses for bad behavior that you that she would no longer accept as that being the status quo. Fuck that. Because if you if you really truly love somebody, and you care for them, you already know what's going to happen if you do what you do. The same way that you know, as a man knows in his right mind, that if he hits a woman, it's the wrong thing to do, right? He knows what the consequences are. She could get hurt really bad, and his ass can go to jail, and his fa and her family can beat the shit out of him before he goes to jail. It, he knows that. The same way, if he goes out and cheats, and he cheats on her, she finds out she's going to be hurt, and then her big brother going to whoop his ass too. And is all his clothes gonna be in a in, in a trash bag at the other girl house? We already right. know that, right? You know, if it's bad behavior, and look, Mama, have it is that you is don't bad have behavior. To deal with it, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. It is bad behavior. You don't have to deal with it, but if you're in a relationship and you're committed to each other, then you have to. If you if you want to work through it, you have to ask yourself what went wrong and why we did what we did and how can we move on from that how can we how can we learn from that how can we grow from that and how can we build with each other again if we want to continue this relationship if we feel like there's more there's more at stake um walking away then it, it, there's more at stake of losing uh together than walking away if it's more beneficial for us to stay together so that's that's what i say look cheating ain't the answer but it's also not the end. It's it's not the answer, but it's also not the end. So don't take it as, oh, girl, he cheated on you. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. No. Have a conversation. Talk about it. Be honest with each other. Or he, he cheated on me. Have a conversation. Men take it 10,000 times. I know from every man that I've ever talked to, if they find out their woman had cheated on them, they are broke to the inside. I mean, they are broke to the to the core and, of the core and, and and that goes back to what we talked about that goes back to the lack of communication because if, 100%. If, if i have the communication and i'm told directly of why you stepped out maybe i can as a man i might not understand it eventually i mean mm -hmm. immediately but over time i might say you know what she came to me as a woman and she told me straight up this is why she stepped out and maybe as a man i should address if I feel like I have to, or I can move right. on and just say that she wasn't for me. But that's what right. adults do. That's you know what adults that, that's that, what that's what adults do. do. And and that's the thing about, you know, with me, with me and Kate Dizzle, like we're gonna talk about a lot of different a lot of different topics. And each week when you guys join us, you know, we're looking to have a lot of fun. Let's talk about some different things. Um Obviously, the chat's fun too. Give us your opinions. Uh, shout us out. Hit us up on our show, on our socials so we can uh, definitely figure out what you guys want to talk about on a weekly basis. So it was a fun show. Yeah, look, we are streaming live on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, 
everywhere where you can virtually see us. That's my stuff, K Dizzle DC. If you young have streams everywhere, you can find us all over the place. Look, we're, we're growing, and the only way we grow is with your help. We need your help. We need to get the word out. Like it, share it, tell people about it. We're going to be on Sundays at nine. Probably go for right around this time. I think we did like an hour and a half. We're going to yeah. keep it simple. We all, we're going to make sure we um, stay engaged and interact. We're going to talk about real stuff because that's the only thing that matters. If you ain't learning from it, from the real stuff, and you're not expanding and um, you're not growing from it, we're not doing anything. We're staying in the same place. So, that's it. Look, man, we're going to wrap this up. Shout out to the chat, everybody that came through. Even Loose Lips, who's wilding out in the chat on some crazy <laughs> stuff. Um, Mark, everybody for their honesty and their participation. We love you. We don't know. Maybe Loose Lips might come next week. We're going to see what's going on. We got to rain him in before he do some crazy dun, dun, dun. That's a Debo. <laughs> Tuck your chains, man. Yeah, Tuck your chains. Y'all go see. go see it if you come through next week, man. Go ahead, get the people your outro, outro help. <laughs> hey, man. You know it's always fun with this man, K Dizzle. One more time. Uh, all dressed up podcast. It's just us talking every week about things we talk about every day. It's all dressed up. Come have fun. Uh, hit us on our socials so we can talk about what you want to talk about because we're definitely not afraid to go in. And um, thank you again. And we appreciate you. Shout out to Full and Beard. Have a great weekend. We love you. Take care. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. On that note, we out. Love y'all. You know, you know. They know, they know. We know, we go all in. We know. 